What is the Tendagaru Formation? The year 1906 was crucial for the paleontology world. During that time, Tanzania was a part of the region called Ostafrica, of the German colonial empire. Some dinosaur bones have been discovered by B. W. Sattler, a German mining engineer in that area. When the news reached Germany, an initial expedition was sent in 1907 by Berlin's Museum of Natural History. A more in-depth expedition was launched between 1909 and 1913, with Werner Janic overseeing several of them. The Tindigaru Formation was dated to the late Jurassic, possibly to the early Cretaceous period. During the Jurassic, Tendigaru was part of the semi-arid coastline of Gondwana. The climate was tropical or subtropical and became more humid as the formation approached the Cretaceous. The rocks were located roughly 60 kilometers northwest of the seaport of Lindi in southeastern Tanzania in East Africa. It appeared that the area provided a wealth of fossils representing different groups from plant remains, invertebrates and vertebrates, like early mammals, crocodiliforms, amphibians, fish, and are considered one of the greatest dinosaur sites in the world, all of exceptional scientific importance. The place was named Tendagaru by the natives in respect of its hilly, rocky nature. The result of the first expedition was the discovery of over 225 tons of dinosaur bones, Unfortunately, the specimens were incomplete. When the Germans vacated Tanzania in 1922 due to the Treaty of Versailles, the Natural History Museum in London, formerly the British Museum of Natural History, launched the British Museum East Africa Expedition, led by William Cutler. Between 1924 and 1931, about 589 crates of specimens representing tens of thousands of kilograms of fossils from 55 quarries, were all shipped to London. The German and British expeditions were supported by teams of local people who acted as excavators, porters, and indeed as navigators. After a long break, a Canadian and Tanzanian team returned to Tendagaru in 1977 and 1978 to look for dinosaurs followed by a German-Tanzanian team in 1994. All of the collections are of high scientific significance. There are striking similarities between the late Jurassic dinosaur faunas of the Morrison Formation and the Tendagaru beds, and were interpreted as evidence for the existence of land connections and dispersal routes between Laurasia and Gondwana. The best known of the big sauropods from the formation is the massive Giraffa Titan Branchi. We talked about Giraffa Titan on this channel in the episode called The Late Jurassic Dinosaurs. Its less known relative is the Archbishop or Brachiosaur. However, it doesn't currently hold any scientific description. One of the more famous diplodocids represented is Dicreosaurus. Tourniaria africana was a genus of diplodocid sauropod dinosaur and first assigned to the wastebasket of Gigantosaurus. Fortunately, in 1911, it was renamed in honor of hepterologist Gustave Tournier. Scientists believed that this species was probably more than twice as long as Dicreosaurus and may have resembled some of its relatives from America. The African equivalent of Stegosaurus is Kentrosaurus. Another representative of the low browsers was the speedy two-footed ornithopod, Dysalatosaurus, the uncatchable lizard. This dinosaur had a similar look to the North American Dryosaurus. According to a 2012 study led by Tom R. Hubner and Vincent Laudette, this little dinosaur reached skeletal maturity in roughly 10 years. Theropods or meat-eating dinosaurs are not well represented in the Tendagaru Formation, although theropod Elaphrosaurus is quite well known to science. 
The biggest late Jurassic Tendagaru beds dinosaur collections are currently housed in the Museum für Naturkund, Berlin, a natural history museum in London. After the 2000s expedition, scientists divided the Tendagaru formation, which overlays the Neoprotozoic basement, into six members or zones. Each member represents various depositional environments. The three sandstone-dominated Tendagaru members have a marginal marine origin. The marine strata have yielded thousands of invertebrates, including corals, bivalves, gastropods, cephalopods, brachiopods, decapods, and echinoderms. The lower, middle, and upper saurian beds are dinosaur-bearing strata of continental to marginal marine origin. And now, let us move on to the denizens of this region. Kentrosaurus Kentrosaurus remains were found and have been excavated between 1909 and 1912 from the Tendagaru site by the German team. Several hundred of the species' bones were collected mainly in the quarries located in the middle Saurian beds, dating from the upper Kimmeridgian or 152 million years ago. More remains were found in the upper Saurian beds, dating from the Tythonian. It was suggested that Kentrosaur may have been a herding animal, as it accounted for about 70 individuals that died on this site. There is a little story on how this dinosaur got its name. Firstly, the name Kentrosaurus was given by Edward Henning, a German paleontologist in 1915, and it was derived from the Greek kentron, meaning sharp point or prickle, and saurus, meaning lizard. In combination, meaning pointed lizard or sharp pointed lizard. He also added the specific name Ethiopicus to indicate the provenance from East Africa. Dear viewers may have already heard about a very similar name that already existed that was given to one of the Ceratopsian Centrosaurus, spelt with the first letter C. Henning's name became controversial because under the rules of biological nomenclature, homonym is forbidden, as two animals should not be given the same name. Henning thought that he had no choice but to rename his stegosaur. So in 1916, it was named Kendrurosaurus, meaning pointed-tailed lizard. On the following year, Hungarian paleontologist Franz Nopsha renamed the genus Dorifosaurus, meaning lance-bearing lizard. In normal circumstances, Henning would have had priority in the renaming of his dinosaur. However, it wasn't necessary due to the different spelling and the new names Doriferosaurus and Kentrosaurus were no longer needed. Therefore, the initial Kentrosaurus with the K for the genus remains valid. Whereas Kentrosaurus and Doriferosaurus are being used as synonyms. But what did Kentrosaurus look like? This dinosaur takes its name from its stegosaurian features, a double row of either spikes or plates on its back, tail and flanks. Although they lived apart by current geography, they have similar appearances. However, Kentrosaurus ethiopicus is tinier than its stegosaurus relatives from America. A few pairs of plates on the neck and back are very much narrower than those of Stegosaurus. Another few pairs of spikes run in a double row right down the tail. Each is up to 60 centimeters or 2 feet in length. A single pair of spikes sticks up sideways from the shoulders. Unlike more advanced Stegosaurus, it seems Kentrosaurus did not have ossicles across its body embedded in the skin. Kentrosaurus might not be the biggest stegosaur, but with all the armor, it had quite an intimidating look, and this gave some protection from its potential predators. 
Each plate contained a large amount of blood vessels. It is thought that they existed to help regulate the dinosaur's body temperature. The other suspected reason would be a showy display during mating rituals or serving as some form of communication purpose. The tail was very long and powerful, and positioned at the center of mass far back for a four-legged animal. It was of medium size, reaching up to 4.5 meters or 15 feet in length, and had a height of about three and a half meters or 11.5 feet. Kentosaurus walked on all four legs. It had hoof-like claws on its toes. The forelimbs were robust and could take up to 10 to 15 percent of the body weight, whereas the hind limbs were straight and powerful, with massive muscles and about twice the size of the forelegs, and positioned on the back of its body higher up. It made the head and neck position, pointing down along its spine, bringing them closer to the earth. The skull is long and narrow, although relatively small, considering the Kentrosaurus was a large dinosaur. The head was elongated and had a horny beak that lacked premaxillary teeth. There was a small hole between the nose and eye, common to most archosaurs. The tiny brain was no bigger than a walnut, but had well-developed olfactory bulbs. This suggests the Kentrosaurus had a very good sense of smell which would have been useful in food gathering. Initially, scientists believed that the tiny brain was too small to control an animal's body. In 1881, Othniel Charles Marsh called the enlarged neural canal near the hip region of the Stegosaurus as the second brain. It made sense at the time that such huge dinosaurs like sauropods and stegosaurs were perfect candidates for the second brain theory. The larger brain was supposedly responsible for the control of the hind limbs and tail, and once under threat from predators, it would have given it a temporary boost. This feature was compared with other animals and discovered to be similar to a hollow glycogen element in a bird's hip. However, it was later discovered that it doesn't have any brain-like function, and its purpose remains unclear. Although the purpose for the large cavity in the hips of species like Stegosaurus and sauropods is unknown. Paleontologists, of course, now have evidence that the two brain theory was a mere myth. The animal weight was established at 700 to 1,600 kilograms, or 1,500 to 3,500 pounds. This dinosaur was strictly a herbivore. Its structure was better suited to reach lower parts, particularly vegetation going up from the ground. With an estimated speed of only five miles per hour, the stegosaur moved around slowly, looking out for food. Lots of ferns and other low-level plants grew along riverbanks. However, there were also forests dominated by conifers in the regions of what is now Eastern Africa. And Kentrosaurus could have used its great size to stand up on the long hind legs for short periods of time. It would allow it to reach up and to eat higher foliage on trees and branches. The dinosaur could probably use the beak to bite off plant material to be later digested in the large gut. Kentrosaurus was often understood to be a primitive member of the Stegosauria. However, after several recent cladistic analyses, it was actually found as more advanced than many other stegosaurs. Elaphrosaurus bambagai A specimen of Elaphrosaurus bambagai was excavated from the middle dinosaur member. It is believed the Ceraptosaurus theropod dinosaur lived during the later part of the Jurassic period, approximately 154 to 150 million years ago, in the Tythonian age. German paleontologist Werner Janitsch named the species back in 1920. Elaphrosaurus's name was derived from the Greek words elaphros, meaning light to carry, 
and Saurus, meaning lizard, and hence the full name meaning was light-footed lizard. The specific name honors the industrialist Paul Bamberg for his financial support of the Tendigaru expeditions. Elaphrosaurus's skeleton was not complete and was missing the skull, hands, and other parts. Classification of Elaphrosaurus was long and complicated and changed many times. From firstly being described by Yarench as a Coleosaurian to be soon placed in the family Ornithomimidae by Franz Nopscher in 1928. A few decades later, Elaphrosaurus was moved to be a member of the Coleridiae. Then it was again called an Ornithomimid, only to be moved in 1988 by Gregory S. Paul to the Coelophysidae. A couple of years later, it was still called an Ornithomimid by some scientists. The 20th century brought in two more attempts for classifications. Since the discovery, this specimen was transferred to the Natural History Museum of Berlin, Germany, where it was kept under glass. Eventually, scientists were allowed to examine the dinosaur remains out of the glass. Carano and Samson in 2008 and Carano et al. in 2012 assigned Elaphrosaurus to the Ceratosauria. The newest work in 2016 concluded that, due to the characteristics, Elaphrosaurus was actually an early member of the Noasauridae within Ceratosauria, and that it formed a distinct group with certain Asian Noasaurids, which were named the Elaphrosaurinae. It is suspected that Elaphrosaurus is related to unrecognized animals of possibly the same genus from the stratigraphic zones 2 to 4 of the Morrison Formation. There were dinosaur footprints found in the Niger Republic and Beit Zayat, which were attributed to Elaphrosaurus, although this assignment is considered inconclusive. On the basis of the partial skeleton, scientists established what Elaphrosaurus looked like. It was distinctive amongst theropods for being shorter-legged for its length. Paul, in 1988, noted that this was the longest-bodied and shallowest chest theropod that he had examined. Elaphrosaurus was about 6.2 meters or 20 feet long and 1.46 meters or 4.8 feet tall at the hip. It weighed about 210 kilograms or 460 pounds, although there was another estimate stating the dinosaur was much larger. The shin bone of Laphrosaurus was measured at 60.8 centimeters or 23 inches and was considerably longer than its thigh bone that measured 52 centimeters or 20.5 inches, suggesting that the dinosaur would have been a fast runner. These proportions were also shared by some ornithomimosaurs, likely indicating cursorial habits, meaning that it could run fast. Its long tail ended with a rare downward bend and was quite stiff. The theropod had short, thin arms with three-fingered hands. The neck was long and slender and supported a rather small skull. It is thought that these attributes could not help Araphrosaurus being a predator of large prey and that the diet was most likely omnivorous or herbivorous, as it was with its close relation Limosaurus. Dicreosaurus. Dicreosaurus was named by Werner Jarensch in 1914 for the Y-shaped spikes on the back of the neck. The name Dicreosaurus was derived from the Greek Dicreos, meaning bifurcated, forked or split, and Saurus, meaning lizard, and together stands for a double forked lizard. It was a quadrupedal sauropod dinosaur. This species was much smaller than Diplodocus and Apatosaurus, but slightly larger than Amargosaurus. Dicreosaurus reached 12 to 15 meters, or 39 to 49 feet in length, and had an estimated weight of 5 to 8 tons, although some sources claim 
that it weighed up to 12 tons. In comparison with average sauropods, the Dicreosaurus family had shorter tails, larger heads, and longer neural spines along their broad neck and back. The spines were similar to those seen on the back of Amargosaurus. These spikes were probably useful for recognition of other individuals of its own species, but also as a form of defense. There is some kind of low sail going over the back. This is because the vertebrae are furnished with extremely long spines that are deeply cleft in the neck. These features would be for show and to frighten its predators. Any tall theropods would have probably found it very hard to bite down onto the back of Dicreosaurus. The neck was strangely short, with only 12 vertebrae, meaning that Dicreosaurus probably fed on low-growing vegetation from ground level to a height of about 3 meters. It does not have the whip tail like other diplodocids had. These sauropods were lighter in comparison with the brachiosaurs, because their vertebra were a lattice of bony struts like a sponge, used to reduce weight and take maximum stress. It is believed the sauropod would have shared and coexisted in the same habitat with the stegosaurid Kentrosaurus and the brachiosaurid Giraffa Titan. These dinosaurs were of different size and quite possibly would have browsed for vegetation at different levels without getting into each other's way. There are two skeletons most known to science, nicknamed M for Dicreosaurus hansibani and M for Dicreosaurus sattleri. Dicreosaurus hansibani is more complete and bigger, whereas Dicreosaurus sattleri has more missing bones and is smaller in size and thought to be a juvenile individual found in the upper layers. Due to these differences, researchers assigned the fossils to two separate species. Recently, more fossils of Dicreosaurus were discovered in North and South America, Africa, and even Asia. However, the Tendagaru Dicreosaurus was so different from North American forms that it has been given its own family, Dicreosauridae. The worldwide discoveries raised the question if Dicreosaurus taxonomy should be revisited. Therefore, Amy Campbell for the Museum für Naturkund, Berlin, started investigating this sauropod family tree using the dicreosaurid material from Tendagaru, and modern technology like 3D scanning is helping in this process. Ostafricosaurus the history of this theropod dinosaur from the family of Spinosaurinae is very interesting. A total of eight teeth have been recovered from the many fossils from the area. Most of them were assigned to other known genus or families of dinosaurs. However, a couple of them did not match any of the known types. This genus was described only on the basis of a couple of teeth by German paleontologist Werner Janensch. He considered the dinosaur to be similar to Allosaurus and assigned the teeth to theropod genus called Labrosaurus. Although in the years to come, some scientists assigned it to the genus Ceratosaurus because Labrosaurus was considered to be a dubious group of dinosaurs. Further analysis was carried out by French paleontologist Eric Bouffetot, who found the holotype teeth to be a member of the family Spinosauridae from the late Jurassic, mainly because the specimen resembled the teeth of the Baryonyx. Spinosaurids are known from the Cretaceous period. Therefore, the discovery of Ostafricosaurus makes it very significant as one of the first Spinosaurids to have existed in the late Jurassic period. Bouffetot formed a new genus called Ostafricosaurus with just a single species Ostafricosaurus crassiceratus in 2012. The generic or first name comes from the German word Ostafrica, standing for the area of East Africa, the former name of the colony in which the fossils were found. The second part of the name is well known, Saurus, in Greek meaning lizard. 
The specific name described the tooth as thick and serrated in Latin. But how tall were they? They were estimated to be 9 foot or 2.1 meters tall. Paleontologists described the look of the dinosaur's skull and head to be narrow with a short but elongated snout, like other spinosaurids that lived after the Jurassic period ended. It is believed that it may have had a small sail on its back to attack a mate, help with thermoregulation, or for the recognition of its own species. The arms were rather short. A rough estimate of Ostafricosaurus's body length of about 8.5 meters, or 28 feet, and height of 2.1 meters, or 6.9 feet at the hips, and a weight of 1.5 tons, was given by Spanish paleontologist Molina Perez in 2016. The form of the holotype tooth measured 4.6 centimeters, or 1.5 inches in length, and was broad at the base, and it had a curved front edge. The front and back cutting edges were unusually serrated. The tooth had two to four denticles per millimeter, or 0.04 inches, and this was not found on spinosaurid dinosaurs that appeared at later times. Eric Bouffetot had a theory that the number of denticles or serrations on the teeth of spinosaurids reduced with their evolution and their changing diet to mostly fish. Apart from fish, this animal is thought to feed on other dinosaurs and pterosaurs. It was established that Ostafricosaurus lived on Earth during the Tythonian age of the late Jurassic, about 152.1 to 145 million years ago. This spinosaurid would have lived in a tropical or subtropical environment with plenty of rainfall. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like, and consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.